John here guys and today I'm talking about the FR Sky X9 Lite. Now this is the latest budget transmitter or radio in FPV to hit the scene and FR Sky is finally responding to Jumper's attempts to eat its lunch as Jumper put out model after model of budget radio undercutting the FR Sky QX7. FR Sky finally responded with putting a budget radio of its own out. And guess what, guys? It's actually pretty good. Now, what do you notice right off the bat? It looks very familiar. It's essentially a tinier, shrunken down version of the X. 9D, the long standing radio, which is actually a duplicate, a licensed mold purchased by Tyrannus that goes back even further to those JR or whoever they got that mold from. This is like a tinier version of it. You can see it's reasonably thin, small, but it still has a good amount of gimbal travel. And that's always been my complaint with the QX uh, or with the X Lite. Uh, I really do like the game controller form factor from whenever I used to have a Turnigy Evolution. But after I switched to my beloved QX7S, uh, it took me so long to get used to a full size gimbal throw. My flight suffered for six weeks till I got used to it. But then after I finally did get used to it, I really enjoyed having that full size throw and felt that the additional resolution in stick movement allowed me a greater level of precision on the race course and out in my freestyle flying. So here you can see both of these things side by side. Um, they are roughly, uh, the, the X9 line is thinner in the thinnest points, but on the thickest parts, it's just barely thinner on the X9 uh, Lite. You can see that the ports are all uncovered on this one. There is a plastic cover that covers it on the QX7S. Now, the biggest thing is that this is a premium carbon fiber look case, which I think is beautiful. And it also has hull sensor gimbals. This one does not. Uh, this QX7 has the option of being powered by double A's or like I have this lithium ion battery, which is 3000 milliamp hours. And uh, you can charge this in your hobby charger. I actually really like these. Um, I've never used 18650s before, even though I've been in the hobby quite some time, which is probably a rarity, but this X9 lights, uses those. So I picked up a couple of these 3000 milliamp Samsung um, 18650 cells from Heli Nation. They're only about five bucks. Uh, so it's a pretty good value to be able to charge these, but I had to purchase a 18650 charger separately, which cost me about 13 bucks. So while this, now I will note before I keep going, how the heck do you get these out? This is like, I usually have to like bang it to try to get these to come out. Or sometimes I might have to use like a butter knife and hope that I make, don't make contact with the battery contacts and you know, fry myself. Um, I don't like this design very much. It's just kind of terrible. Also these 18650s are kind of the flat kind and I couldn't figure out how to power up this radio at first. It took me a long time and I finally realized I just wasn't making contact in these. So I had to kind of make sure that these are pushed close together. So if you're gonna get 18650s, if you can get the ones that have the little, you know, the, the positive side pushing out a little bit, and it goes, you know, negative, positive, negative, positive across that way. Let's close that. Let's power this thing on. Welcome to Liberty X. Oh, the voice pack. Yes, I have installed the voice Triple pack. Warning. Now, I've actually had this for a while. Um, but I didn't ever bother to set it up because uh, I read the most disturbing news, which was that this did not work with the XM Plus receiver or any D16 receivers. No, God! 
God! No, God, please, no! 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 So I really... Okay, I'm gonna turn this off so I don't keep hitting that. So I was really disappointed by that fact because I only use the XM Plus and they will not convince me to switch to another receiver unless I finally decide to make the leap to Crossfire, which by the way, this is not compatible with. But, so I was like, what do I do with this? I'm not gonna buy another type of receiver. I have like 50 XM Pluses installed in various quads. I always keep about five or 10 on hand in case I need to set up a new quad. And I'm not switching now, there's no way. That's a great receiver, it's like 12 bucks, 13 bucks. Um, why would they want you to switch? Well, because they wanna make more money off of you. That's why. So while this is a great price at 60 to 70 to 80 dollars, making me buy new receivers was simply not an option. So I just let it sit on the shelf. I was actually planning a video where I was gonna go to a busy downtown street corner and just throw this into a random dumpster. Without honor. Oops. But before I could get around to shooting that, FR Sky released a nightly build update that does allow you to use an XM Plus in D16 mode and you don't have to flash the receiver because I'm not gonna flash the receiver. Sorry guys, way too lazy for that. Not doing it, not gonna do it. So, when you install that 2.3 nightly build or whatever the latest version is at the time, um, I'll leave the link in the description to go download it. You then get three files and put those three files in the firmware folder. Now the files are gonna be the radio um, protocol and two other ones. I'll, I'll list them in the description below. You take those three files, put them in the firmware folder on your SD card, insert it in there, and then you go and update those three things in the Tyrannus radio itself. Now I'll also link Albert Kim's video on how to do this. He does a really good thorough job, so I'm not gonna repeat all that junk. Just go watch his video and you can update it just fine. So to much to my uh, pleasant surprise, as soon as I updated those things, went to bind it to a quad with an XM Plus on it, boom, I'm up in the air and running. So first flights, it feels good. I think that these thin stickens are really more suited towards pinchers. I like my chunky stickens that are more like a game controller. Um, this is what I would prefer, but these are not the same thread size as this. I tried to put them on there, it won't fit. So I need to get some kind of stickens for this to really get optimal. It feels good. Um, a lot of people say that the gimbals are just fine. Now you'll notice that your stick position is a little further towards the center on this. So that'll take a little bit of getting used to, but the gimbal travel itself feels quite good. Um, I've been flying this back to back and you can tell the difference with the Hall sensor gimbals. They just feel a little bit better, but this is perfectly flyable and for beginners getting into the hobby i think if you can get this for 70 dollars buy yourself a charger for 15 buy yourself two 18 650s for 10. And it's a price i'm willing to pay and if i'm the only one then so be it but i'm willing to bet i'm not now you're looking at about 95 bucks that's slightly cheaper than a qx7 with batteries and you're always going to need 18650s for something so you may actually want to buy four so you can always have backups this is a great option that can be expanded with you um, i'll show some flight footage of me flying this thing around it, it it felt like i was able to perform all the maneuvers that i want to do and that's really all i want on a radio um, it doesn't come with a case like this one does but this one costs 185 dollars this one costs $75, you know? Uh, it, it's like less than half the price. So I think this may be my new recommendation for beginners um, over the QX7. Now, the caveat to that is, and this is a big one, 
as of now, it doesn't use, it can't bind to D8 receivers. D8 is like your Emacs Tiny Hawk, a lot of your Tiny Whoops, any of the crazy B boards with the uh, FR Sky SPI, I think you need D8 mode to be able to connect to those. So this can't fly a lot of those micros, which is a problem because if you're gonna be recommending an inexpensive radio to a beginner, they're most likely gonna wanna fly one of those micros FR Sky. Get with the program, what are you doing over there? And so that really puts it on the fence. If you know you're gonna be flying three inch and five inch, this is a very good option. Um, they are coming out with a pro version that does have hall sensor gimbals. You cannot charge these 18650s with this, but there is a little chip that you can install that will allow that. There, It's being sent to me now, so I'll review that when it comes in. So who's this for? If you're getting into the hobby, you need a radio, you need a backup radio, you need a radio to a friend that's cheap that you can get to them, give it to them. Have them fly your three inch or your five inch or any quad that has a D16 receiver or R9 or whatever those other FR Sky things. I don't buy into this new Asus protocol. It's just not there yet. There's no reason to switch. Um, God, I hope that they put out the D8. If they put out the D8 on here, it's full recommend. But as of now, you gotta find out if you fall into one of those. If you're a new pilot and you wanna fly the little micros, which why wouldn't you? That's the best way to learn. This this may not be for you. You may still be better off getting a QX7. So close for our FR Sky, so close. And why give us the firmware for the D16 but not the D8, come on. Hopefully they'll do that soon. And if they do, I'll update. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying the pro version of this too. Thanks guys.